So what we have entered into the R&D 100 award is um, antibody therapeutic for SARS-CoV-2. And so these are a different type of antibody therapeutic, not the same as kind of what other companies or people are talking about. There is Regeneron. This is similar to that in that it is an, an antibody therapy unlike a vaccine that takes time for you to get immunity against it. This is something that can work immediately, but it is something kind of naturally produced by the body. However, the ones we found are synthetic and they're also modular in that you can change them. You can make them different. You can engineer them in a lot of different ways to bind to multiple different places on the virus that they can also induce your immune response. So they can bind to your immune cells and kind of allow your immune cells to recognize that there is a virus there, um, increase the uptake of that virus and increase the presentation so that in addition to having a monoclonal antibody therapeutic that's neutralizing the virus, preventing it from getting into the cells, you can also have a vaccine-like effect and induce your immune response to have a better response to that virus. The nice thing about antibodies is that, at, given as a therapeutic, that they can work right away. Antibodies are something naturally produced by the body, so the body won't react to them and see them as foreign, and they're naturally meant to stimulate the immune response. Basically can cause clearance of infected cells. So in addition to preventing the virus from getting into the cell, you still have the ability for the antibodies to also help the body clear cells that have already been infected. So there are three things that we wanted to address. We wanted to address uh, manufacturability, which is a real issue with monoclonal antibody therapies. We wanted to address time. It, it takes a lot of time right now to, to identify monoclonal antibodies given conventional methods. It's been reduced very much from, from historic means, but still kind of longer than we would like. Then we also want to make monoclonal antibodies better. We don't want to just kind of use what's out there. We want to see based on what we understand about antibodies, can we engineer them to have enhanced features? Can we engineer them to bind more than one site so we can not have to worry about these variants? So how we identified our particular antibodies is that we use a next generation novel synthetic library. And so basically our library is something that we designed ourselves in, a, in combination with twist biosciences and using novel DNA techniques, we were able to get a highly diverse library. But anything found is gonna be unique because we made it. It's not like any other library that's been made before. In addition, because we were able to, to make it so diverse and we did multiple rounds of screening, we found highly potent nanobodies, which is the, the variable region, the fragment that binds. And so these, in addition to being kind of novel, they're also single domain heavy chain antibodies. So they only have the heavy chain. There's no light chain, which makes them easier to manufacture. It makes them um, better able to access certain proteins that conventional antibodies can't access. And it also makes them um, better able to access certain tissues because they're smaller than conventional antibodies, but still with all the benefits of conventional antibodies and in in their ability to, to last in the body for a long period of time and to induce an immune response. So if someone's already been infected with the virus, you can still help block more virus from getting in, but also cause the, the body to recognize the, the cells that are infected by the virus and allow them to get rid of those cells and, and clear the infection. It's a very rapid process for us to screen this library. And so with the new variants that are coming out, we can very quickly find nanobodies that actually bind to those variants. We can make cocktails. We can make, uh, again, engineer them to be very modular so that you have one part of your therapeutic that's against maybe the Wuhan strain and one part of your therapeutic that's against some of these newer strains that are coming out in New York or California, South Africa. A lot of them have overlap, some of them don't. Um, and so basically, this allows for us to be able to kind of deal with anything that might come our way, but also by combining them, you can reduce the chance of, of developing more variants and, and more escape mutations.